Okay, we're good to go. Okay, so uh, earlier I did a live video that went kind of horribly, uh, but I had an idea, and really I just it was hard for me to think when I was um, doing a live video. I feel like I'm under pressure, uh, but I've thought this out, and I think I've found the solution to my problem. So first thing, uh, for those of you who don't know, go to github.com forward slash melx1000. This is a project for fun. This is not like a, a real program I'm writing. It's just like... I thought I'd make it, it might come in useful. Uh, HTML uh, front end for MPV video player. Go here and you can download the zip file or clone it using git. I'm gonna close it using git, so git clone and type in my super secret password, whoops. There we go, which downloads the code and a couple sample videos. And then we can move into that folder and then here we can uh, run my start script, uh, which should start it. And if it's already running, it will tell you that it's already running. Um, and then at that point, uh, you can, uh, in a local browser, go to localhost. Uh, and I'm starting it by default on port 8080 because I run Apache on uh, port 80 by default. Um, so here you can see it took a second and it loaded up for uh, thumbnails for videos. And I can click on these videos and they will start playing. Um, and they're just short little clips, uh, but they can be full movies and whatnot. So uh, here's the issue. Let me go into my videos folder here. I'm gonna remove all the files that are in there, yes. And I am going to copy a bunch of MOVs in there. Now if I refresh the page, it takes quite a long time because it's generating the thumbnails for all those files before it loads them onto here. So it's going to take 10 or 15 seconds probably. It's using FFmpeg in the background. There you go. Uh, but then once they're loaded, these are MOV files. And again, we're using MPV in the background, so it will play any video format uh, that, uh, that MPV will support, which is pretty much everything. So I don't think that we're using uh, just what the web uh, browser supports, which is going to be like, uh, you know, uh, MP4 or uh, OG files or web, uh, uh, WebM, right? That's what it's called. Anyway, because uh, it's, it's not, we're just using um, HTML as the interface, but we're still using MPV as the background. But again, the issue is if, if I refresh this again, it's going to try to regenerate all those thumbnails and it's going to take a little while, which is fine, but I don't want just this blank screen. I want as it generates the thumbnails for them to appear on the screen. And um, so the problem I was having originally was was this, it's, it's running the script and then loading them all. Then I tried to run them individually, uh, but the problem was I was still, even though I was calling the scripts individually, I was running all the scripts at the same time, if that makes any sense. I was putting everything in a for loop that kept running the same script, but all at once. So my idea was this, I'm gonna move into my CJ event. And again, I'm using BusyBox uh, HTTPD uh, because I'm making this more of a program that's running scripts in the background, and if I was to do this with Apache, I'd have to change all these permissions and stuff to get it to work, where this just works. I've explained that a lot in the past. So, uh, Vim, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy, and I started doing something similar to this in the last live video. I'm gonna create a thumbnails list.cgi. And actually, I don't even know why I copied that, because I'm just gonna erase pretty much everything in there. First of all, I'll remove that, don't need any of this really. All I'm going to do is I'm going to list everything in the thumbs folder, at least every PNG. That way if a rogue file gets in there. Uh, so if we were to run that script here in the shell, you can see it outputs. You can ignore these first two lines because that's for the web browser, but everything else it will get is here. Uh, but I don't necessarily want uh, the folder and the full name, I just want the base name. So what I can do here is I can throw this into a while loop, while read, file, do, done. And we're gonna say base name, dollar sign, file, put in quotations just in case. If I run it again, there we go. We get a list of our PNGs, um, which actually uh, might be easier. No, we'll leave that. I can either remove the PNG here and add it in the script for the thumbnails or remove the PNG. You'll, you'll see what I'm saying, uh, whether we're talking about the video file or the thumbnail. Uh, I gotta distinguish between them. I can either do it in the shell script or in the JavaScript in the interface. I'm gonna go with the uh, JavaScript interface. 
Uh, so now I'm going to go into my index.html, make this a little smaller so it just fits on the screen better. So right now we have this load video. So what the scripts are currently doing is when the page loads, it's going to run this function, which starts generating all the thumbnails and gets a list of them at the end and then loops through all them once it gets that list and prints up the, the, the thumbnail. So we don't actually need that. Um, all we have to do is generate it and uh, I probably don't need anything in here but calling the script. But down here in our icons, uh, where it actually is creating the HTML for the icons, I'm gonna paste in that code and then 2DD, move this down here, indent everything properly, or at least close to being proper. Uh, <clears throat> so I do need to do a get here, so I'm going to say dollar sign dot get, and I'm gonna say CGI dash bin forward slash, and we're going to get our list this time. And then we're gonna say, function. Oh, by the way, I'm doing this fast because I have probably about 15 minutes to get this video done. Um, and then I, ha I have to leave. So do that. I can indent stuff properly. Okay. So we're calling that uh, and we're not going to be passing it the icon because we're going to be getting it. I don't know why am I calling this icon. It really should be thumbnails. I just realized that. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's all in the name. So we're gonna split everything, but really this isn't videos anymore, this is thumbs. So we'll just call it thumbs. And then we're gonna say for each in thumbs, and we'll just call it T for thumb, for each individual thumb. As long as the T is not blank, we don't need this. Then we're going to append this and we're gonna say here, see now this needs the actual um, video name, not the thumbnail. So here we're going to change this. We don't need the PNG there anymore. So plus that, we'll just say T. And that should be right for generating the thumbnail, but we need to put the proper video name in here. Uh, so what we're going to do, well I could do it here or when I call it further down. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We'll do it here. Uh, we'll say that um, var video equals, and we'll say it's t dot split, and here we're going to say, oh, no, no, instead of split, let's do a replace, that would be better. Rather than creating an array and pulling parts of the array, we'll just say replace dot PNG with blank. So that should give us, because the script is going to return the file name dot MOV dot PNG, and we, want, we don't want the PNG for the video name. So here we can just put in video. And I think that's correct. So let's save that. So again, I don't know why I call, I, I guess I can change this name now because we can stay icons, we'll call it thumbs for thumbnails. Uh, or actually don't want to do that because I have a variable called that and that could cause problems. So we'll just call it get thumbs. There we go. And we're actually going to end up putting this in a loop. But let's go ahead and test it now. We're going to refresh this page, come down here, and in our console, we can call that. And there you go. So as I call it, it loads. Uh, but one thing, so it just loaded, when I ran it a second time, it loaded more thumbnails, replace, not removing the ones. So what we want is after our git here, uh, we are going to say our icons again. I should, I should name, I don't know why I called it icons. It shouldn't be icons, it should be thumbs. But we're going to say it's HTML. I think there is actually a clear function, but I usually just say HTML and put empty quotes. So now... It's generating the thumbnails, and as it's generating, I can I can call this function, and it's going to load them. So I'm manually doing it here, but what we can do is come up here, and we can say set intervals 
get thumbs, comma, and 1,000 for one second. This is kind of a sloppy way to do it, but it's what I'm going to go with for right now. But I must type something wrong, and it's probably instead of interval, it's inter intervals, it's interval. There we go. So now, instead of seeing it at blank screen, as the thumbnails are generated, they are appearing. And if I replace everything properly in the name, there we go, that's all of them. I can click on this and it starts playing. Uh, one thing that I did do in the last live video that I didn't save that I should probably fix is Vim CGI bin, our play function. Uh, yeah, here I should kill all MPV. That way we don't get multiple videos running. So again, I'll refresh it. So again, this is just, you know, for fun. And a more efficient way would be to check if the thumbnails exist, don't recreate them, but make sure that the video still exists. That way if the video gets removed, the thumbnails get removed as well, or at least ignored. Um, and we do have this continuous loop going with uh, checking for the thumbnails. If we come here, you can see every second it's still checking for new thumbnails, uh, which could be good or bad. Um, it's kind of pointless at this point, uh, but if I was to incorporate in that loop uh, the generating of the thumbnails, if I added new videos to my videos folder, uh, I wouldn't have to refresh the page. It would automatically get them. It all depends on, on, like, on what you want to do. So again, that's just basically... Again, this is for fun. I'm not going into to making it perfect. I'm just getting it working. Uh, so now, again, we added in that kill function. So I should be able to press play on this and then go here and start a new video. And it should kill the last one. So it's still running. You can hear the audio. If I click this and it kills the last one before it starts playing the new one. So we don't get multiple videos playing. Uh, and again, uh, so that's it. I'm going to, again, post this on GitHub. Uh, it's the... I'm going to upload it now, the, the changes. Um, so again, that's um, github.com forward slash melx1000. Uh, and then under repositories, search for HTML front end for MPV video player. And go ahead, download and, and, and give it a play. Uh, see what you think. Again, it's kind of fun. And again, um, the uh, start script in here, which starts up the server, checks to make sure you have BusyBox installed. And at least on a Debian-based system, it's going to try to use apt. Uh, to install it, and as I said in the last live video, you don't really necessarily want to put sudo commands like this in... Yeah, in this case, it's okay. <laughs> it's a little sloppy, but it's going to do an update and then try to install BusyBox if you don't currently have it installed. And you could probably use, you know, you can use any web server, but this is light, quick, and easy to use. It's going to start it on port 8080, which I should probably have some output in here that says that. Um, we should actually say started <coughs> on port 8080, excuse me. <coughs> um, I was gonna add something to this, I forget now. But it's already running, start, see it says it's already running. It's running in the background, uh, PSAUX, grep, HTTPD. You can see it right here, it's the second one. The first one is my doorbell script. If you watched on my second channel, my doorbell, and I have that running in a cron job. So if I was to right now kill all H uh, busy box, yeah. and I run that again, you notice both of them are gone, but uh, at the start of the next minute, it will start this back up because I had problems where I was killing busy box, forgetting that I killed it, and then uh, my doorbell wouldn't work. <laughs> because I need that script running on my computer for my doorbell to send signals to uh, all my devices, my wife's computer, my phone, my wife's phone, and to take pictures of who's ringing the doorbell. Again, I did all that on my second channel. If I run this again, it hasn't been a minute yet, I guess. Let's see, um, date, it is, oh, just about time. If I run this again, there it is. So, so I have that running. Um, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, I feel kind of rushed because I'm, I'm running out of time. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to say. Um, oh yeah, now I remember what I was going to say. So in our startup script, vim start, which is inside the, the, the package here, I'm starting this in a way that it's accessible to anyone on your local network. Um, so be careful with that. Of course, again, 
all they can really do is start playing videos on your computer. Um, to change that, you can you can uh, do uh, local only. Uh, there's options with that with the BusyBox. Let's see if we quit out of this and we do BusyBox HTTPD forward slash help. Will that bring it up? Not forward slash help. Uh, forward slash question mark. Uh, there is a way to bring up I uh, a man file for BusyBox. We'll have it. If not, yeah, so HTTPD, here are lists. Um, I forget what it is. I've gone over it before <laughs> in previous years, but there is a way to make it so it only runs on local so That way you don't have to worry about people accessing it. You can also password protect it, um, but re running it as a web server that's accessible by other devices makes it nice because, uh, again, I can use my phone as a remote control now, which is really one of the reasons I've done this. So if I was to hit F12 here and go into mobile mode, you can see this is what it would look like on a, on, a, on a phone. So I can bring this up on my phone, sit across the room and play videos. And of course, you can add functionality to fast forward, rewind and all that stuff. But right now I'm just playing around with the basic, click it and it will start. Of course, we've killed our server. It's not running right now. That's why we got all this red error down at the bottom here. Um, yeah, sorry if I'm talking fast. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Again, check out the script over at GitHub. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. And I just realized I do this all the time with the live video. I didn't change the thumbnail for this live video. And it's probably still a LMMS thumbnail. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.